Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to do some silhouette rendering in Blender. This is a specific type of art style that I've been playing around with for quite a while. You can see here from past pieces of artwork that I've made, I really like doing this type of art style in Blender. And today I'm going to show you how to accomplish it yourself. So let's get right into it. Okay, so you can see here from the example of the image that I created for this tutorial, this is going to be the type of scene that we're going to be recreating here in Blender. So let's go ahead and get started by having a fresh new scene here. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the cube and I'm going to be using the Grove. This is an add-on, uh, a Blender tool that I've been using for quite a while and I definitely recommend it to all Blender users. This is an awesome add-on on creating trees in Blender. Um, it's, it's an amazing add-on. I use it all the time. And you basically just start off with a little stem and you've got all your settings here for different trees. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a preset here. You, there's so many trees that you can choose from. Uh, they got they got willows, conifers, birch trees. They've got all kinds of stuff. I'm going to go with a magnolia tree. And I've got one of their twigs here. So I've got the white willow twig. So I'm just going to click on that. And I've got my leaves coming in just like that. And I'm going to start adding some settings here so the scale maybe we'll make that a little bit bigger you know you can you can see this in real time you can play with it uh, I th believe this is the number of years so once you hit grow it's gonna add like eight years to the tree and the tree is just gonna grow it's pretty cool I mean this is a really awesome add-on and I definitely recommend it to everyone you can play with the density here uh, you can give it more life, I believe, in the branches and the twigs. So I'm just going to keep clicking on grow here. And we'll get the type of tree that I kind of want here. So I'm going to add in more density. So there are all kinds of different options here. I mean, you can start turning the tree. You can grow it a certain way in footage and stuff um, you can thicken branches bring them together you can bend it a certain way you can do all kinds of crazy stuff one of the ones that I love the most though is this draw feature so with this draw feature you can actually click on different branches and draw them in a certain way so if we go ahead and click on draw, it's going to bring up this tool here and it's going to start snapping your cursor to different branches that I can see. And you can still move around in the viewport with your middle mouse button. This is really cool. So now you can just kind of draw the type of branch that you might want to get. A nice big one kind of shooting out there. It calculates it and then it grows that branch and readjusts the leaves accordingly and adds the same type of vegetation to them. It's a really cool feature to give the artist complete control over how you want the tree to look. So I think that tree looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and leave that there. I'm gonna go ahead and close that and I'm gonna close our toolbar there. Now you can see here, my viewport is lagging a little bit. We've got a lot of different leaves here. And this is a very dense tree, but this tree looks really good. So what we're going to do now is kind of make the environment. Um, everything is going to have a very basic material, and that is black. I mean, we're doing a silhouette rendering, so we want the material to kind of reflect that. We kind of had to fake some things in Blender and able to get that kind of result. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a ground here real quick. I'm just gonna scale this up here, it gets a nice size. I'm gonna take our tree here, make sure I select all of it. I'm gonna go into top view here, and I'm gonna kinda of set up the scene, kinda of how I showed you 
in that first little preview there. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all lighting. We don't need it. Okay. And a little trick that I've learned is to kind of scale this in. It cuts down on all the particles that are off frame of the camera here. We're gonna have in some grass right now. Cool. All right. So if you haven't watched my previous tutorial on using mega scans in Blender, go ahead and click on the link right here and go ahead and watch that. But I'm going to be using some mega scans assets real quick here just to get some nice grass. Okay, so we've got this grass here. I've already got it on my local drive, so I'm going to go ahead and export that into Blender. Again, if you don't know anything about any of this, go ahead and watch my previous tutorial. It explains all of this in this particular app with Bridge and Blender using Megascans assets. All right. So once you export it in, we'll have our grass right there. Sweet. And we can just kind of lower that below the, uh, the viewport or the, uh, the line of sight there, just so it's below the ground. And in the materials here, I'll open up another window here real quick and get the shader editor. We've got the nice shader set up for cycles or EV, um, but we don't want any of this. <laughs> we want uh, just one specific color. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all of this. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and delete these Get these out of these sockets here like so oh, gotta get a little closer oh blender just delete it okay so the base color obviously very dark we want silhouette rendering we don't want any specularity and just to make sure i kind of turn up the roughness too so it's going to be completely black and we can check that here real quick. Sweet. Okay. Now everything's going to be black against an HDRI background and that's where you're going to kind of get that lighting emitted from. So, okay, moving straight along. So this tutorial is not a bajillion hours long. I'm going to go ahead and do this to the tree real quick too. The Grove add-on gives you a shader setup as well. So I'm going to delete that. And actually, you know what's better to do? It's just to copy and paste materials. So I'm just going to grab all these. And here, actually I can save time doing by doing that there we go sweet okay all right we are good to go now we can go ahead and add in our grass as a particle system to this plane so let's go to the particle system tab add hair check advanced and we need to make this a group real quick so let's select all of our plants here Select that, get rid of the empty. Control G and name this grass. All right, cool. Now let's just go to the render here. Change this to collection. And the collection is going to be the grass that we just made. There you go. Now let's go ahead and turn up the scale turn up the scale randomness because it's nature it's all random let's go ahead and add in about 5,000 and I like to kind of get the shot ready of where the camera is going to be but I like looking in the entire 3d viewport here so I can kind of see surrounding areas outside of what the camera would actually see. So I like playing with this Brownian amount. This kind of helps just kind of shuffle things around, make the nature a little bit more random. Uh, let's go ahead and add in a couple more like that. Okay. 
Now here's where the story comes into play. So if you go on Google and you type in people PNG, people alpha mask, whatever, this is where you can kind of get different stories of different things going on. So this, this image right here could be a whole story in and of itself. You could have some post-apocalyptic thing that he's taking a picture of or, you know, whatever. The, the story is based on whatever type of image you have at the time. So whatever scene you want to kind of make, you kind of base your scene in your environment around the picture that you have. Now I know that we're not actually making physical characters in this tutorial, but this is a different type of art style in Blender. So it's alpha masked PNG people. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and hit Shift A, images as planes. I love that this is built in now. You don't have to enable that anymore. And I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to where I have the people in my scene. Okay, so this is where I kind of have some of my alpha masked images. This is where some of my stories have come into play. You can see from past renders, uh, there's the family one. So we're gonna, I'm gonna be go ahead and use this one here. It's a family having fun, throwing the ball around. Uh, we don't need to change any of the settings here because the alpha is already being used. We simply just need to hit import. All right. So I'm just going to rotate the plane and kind of set this up in a nice general area for right now. All right, I'm gonna hit Control Alt Number Pad Zero to snap my camera to the view of where I was just at in my viewport. And I'm gonna kind of move this around. I'm gonna get nice and close to the grass. And I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the camera up. If you hit R, and then double tap X, you'll move just in the Z direction. Cool. If you just hit R and X once, you'll move in the Z direction as well. If you double tap R, you can kind of free roam the camera. So if you didn't know that, now you do. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and push the family back here a little bit more, kind of in between the tree there and stuff. All right. Now we can kind of turn on textured view and I can kind of see where exactly everyone is. So you kind of want to watch the feet and everything. Make sure that they're not floating in the, in the sky there. Also, we have mom right now kind of being eaten alive by the tree here. So let's kind of rotate that tree and make sure she's in front. And then I'm gonna double tap R and kind of bring them a little bit more flat. They were kind of standing too straight up along the Z axis. So I kind of brought them down so they look a little bit better on the camera. Kind of just a perspective thing that you have to pay attention on. Okay, now let's go ahead and pick our environment lighting. So I'm going to add an environment texture and from my HDRs here, this is a mix of HDR maps from HDRI Haven or HDRmaps.com in their free section. So definitely check out HDR Haven and HDRmaps.com. So I want a nice uh, sunset. I'm a sucker for a nice sunset HDRI. So I'm gonna use either this one or this one or this one <laughs> or this one or this one. I have so many. So let's start with this one and let's see how that looks. All right, let's go ahead and save it too. Make sure you save often enough. I think that was the first time I saved in this tutorial. Don't do what I did. All right, let's see what needs fixed here. Okay, so a couple things. So our ground here needs the material of the black material that we made for starters, that should help. Let's see here. Yes, that does help, okay. Now, the leaves on the tree need 
changed here. So over here, the white willow, it's kind of like grayed out, but I can still kind of work with it here. So I'm just gonna switch those to the material that we have for everything else. Okay. And then we just need to adjust the environment, which is also in the shader editor. So go ahead and change this to the world settings in the shader editor. Okay. And if you hit control T, you can bring up a texture coordinate and a mapping node. I don't know if you still need to have the node wrangler add-on enabled. Uh, if it's not, go ahead and enable it. I'm not sure if that's enabled by default now or not. Let me check real quick. Yeah, if you don't have this checked, that shortcut won't work. So go ahead and make sure that node wrangler is checked. And when you have this selected, you can hit control T and it'll quickly bring up a texture coordinate and a mapping node for us to uh, change the environment around. So I'm gonna switch to EV real quick. And this is gonna help me with a real time readout of how the sky looks. I kind of switched to EV just to do this stuff real quick so I can get the sky um, exactly how I want. And of course my computer is being very slow right now. Come on, there we go, all right. So I'm gonna kind of position the sun right around the tree there. I think will be pretty good. And then we can adjust down like that along the X. And we can also enable more strength because it's an HDRI. So we can really pump in the strength there. All right, now I'm gonna move the family because mom is still kind of hidden there. So I'm gonna move them and then I'm gonna kind of move the tree. It's probably better to move the tree off camera a little bit more than the family. Just like that. All right. Now, the last thing we need to do is adjust our depth of field because they're out of focus. So I'm gonna make my focus object, whatever the name of your PNG is, is usually how that works. And then you can kind of play with the f-stop here in EV2. Although sometimes, sometimes it's uh, snapping that doesn't really work too well, uh, at least that I have found. So I'm gonna enable limits. And I can see right there is about where I have it. So sometimes it is, I don't know. Sometimes I've seen that it doesn't work. So you can, everyone can take that for what it is, but I like physically putting the focus right where I need to. Okay. Go ahead and switch back over to cycles and let's take a look at how this looks. This looks exciting, I like this. Let's go ahead and save it first. And let's go into rendered view. All right, and there we go. That is pretty much the end of the tutorial. This is how you make a silhouette rendering in Blender. Like I said, I love this art style. I've been doing this art style for quite a few years now and you saw some of the art that I've made from it. It's a very unique style. I love doing it and I can't wait to see what you guys create with it. Let me know if you guys liked this tutorial, if this was a help to you. And I thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.